All right, today I'm back with my M37 Vintage Off-Road Record. These trucks originally came with a carburetor that included a governor on it to keep the engine from revving too high. Most people say that you really shouldn't rev this engine much over 3000 RPM. As I showed on the dyno, it's making its max horsepower well before that anyways. I don't have a tachometer in the truck, so when I'm driving it or when I'm off-road, I have no idea what the engine RPM is. And secondly, someone has installed a carburetor that does not include a governor. So that means when I've been driving this truck, I could rev the engine to dangerous levels. Because I want the vintage off-road wrecker to be very reliable, I'm going to take care of this problem today. So this is what I bought. This is an MSD rev limiter, and this is a soft rev limiter, which is really important because you want to, in this case, run up to the maximum RPM and stay there. A hard rev limiter will just cut the power. It'll start backfiring. It could damage your ignition, damage your engine. But this one, uh, if I'm pulling something going off road, I can let the engine RPM come up to the rev limiter and stay there. There's a little port on the back, these two holes right here. And into that, you plug in one of these chips that corresponds to the RPM that you wanted to cut your ignition at. So this kit has 3000 to 3800. I'll probably be using the 3000 or 3200 chip. And this should greatly improve the drivability of this truck as well as keeping it safer as well. Before I install this in the truck, I need to configure this to work for a six cylinder engine. Right now it is programmed for an eight cylinder engine. It says here in the instructions, I'm going to remove this cap here and then for a six cylinder engine, I'm going to cut the red loop. For a four cylinder engine, I would cut the red and blue loops. Underneath that cap, this is what it looks like. You can see the red loop and the blue loop. And for the six cylinder, I'm going to cut that red loop. Red loop is cut. I can put the cap back on and get this box installed somewhere on the truck. I found a nice spot under the dash to mount the control box. All of the wires for this installation are going to connect to the ignition coil, except for the ground, which is this black wire right here. The purple one is not going to be used in this case, and in probably a lot of cases, this is going to be an extra wire that's not even used. In the engine bay, I'll be connecting up the red wire to the positive side of the coil, and the white and green wires to the negative side of the coil. But these have spade terminals, and although these are okay on a street car, these are not okay on an off-road vehicle or a race car that's going to be bouncing around on a vehicle where you really don't want these to pop off. So I will cut these wires to length and put ring terminals on, but for now, I just want to connect the rev limiter and make sure it works before I cut the wires and I can't send it back. And to do that, I'm going to put these spade connector adapters these do three wires. There's also ones that do just two wires. I only need to connect the green and white to one and the red to the other. So I'm going to use these double connectors. And these will let me temporarily test this to make sure it works before I actually cut the wires. I have it temporarily connected up. Let's see if the truck even runs now. Okay, it runs. Let's hook up a tachometer. I've connected up the tach signal from my dyno jet. That way I can get a very accurate tach signal and I'll be able to see the TV from inside the vehicle. Now let's rev it to 3000 and see if it stops there. Okay, I'm gonna rev it up and see what it sounds like if we hit the rev limiter. 1500. Yeah, it's not letting me go up to 3,000. 2911, I think, was the highest I saw. It's not popping, not banging. So it's definitely working. And I'll be able to fine tune my maximum RPM using those chips. But for right now, I'm going to keep it at the safe level of 3,000 RPM. If I go back to one of my old dyno graphs 
And let's get rid of the torque. And instead of viewing horsepower versus RPM, let's view speed. So now we can see what speed I was going in each RPM. So if I click here at 3000 RPM, that would be 52.89 miles per hour. If I want to get to 55, right about here, need to put in a chip that is over 3125. So at 32, I'd be doing 56 mile per hour. So if I want to do 55 miles per hour down the road, I need to put in a 3200 RPM chip. And at 3000, I would be doing about 53 miles per hour. It says up here in the corner that the maximum speed I hit on the dyno was 63.31 miles per hour. And the engine was at 3600 RPM at that time. The truck being shaped like a brick might not have enough power to even get to 63 miles per hour. It probably could going downhill, but the engine would not last that long at sustained RPMs of 3,600 RPM. And that's the purpose of this rev limiter, is to set it to where I think I can sustain a certain RPM for a more extended period of time. Here's the final install of the wires. I now have ring terminals on them. On the right, you can see the white and green wire are connected to the negative side of the coil. And on the left, the red wire is connected to the positive side of the coil. Okay, let's try a real world test. I have my speedometer on my phone here. Let's see what speed we get up to. Okay, I don't think the road is long enough. It is cold and snowy out here tonight, so the truck is running a little better. The more I drive it, the more heat I get into it. 35 miles per hour seems like a good speed in third gear. All right, let's get some speed coming out of this roundabout. Let's see if we can hit 55 miles an hour. We're at 45. All right. Need to be careful going around a corner here. 50 seems a little fast, miss. Fifty-two miles an hour, I think is what we're stuck at. I think 45 mile per hour is more of a comfortable speed here. I think the rev limiter is going to be a great addition to the vintage off-road wrecker. And remember, if you are going to install one of these in your vehicle, the rev limiter is not going to protect your engine from over revving when going downhill or if you accidentally downshift into the wrong gear. Your engine will still over rev and potentially damage itself. I think that's going to be it for today. So if you want to see more videos on my M37 vintage off-road wrecker, comment below and click subscribe.